Welcome, everyone. My name is Don Biddo, and I am a nuclear radiologist and nuclear medicine section chief at VRAD. Today, I will be presenting a VQ case review series. This is a follow-up to my previous session titled VQ, Simplified Criteria for the On-Call Radiologist, which outlined a simplified set of evaluation criteria that I'll be using to assess the cases in today's session. If you haven't reviewed my previous session, I suggest you do so before watching this session. This presentation is accredited for AMA Category 1 CME. I have no disclosures. My goals for this talk are to demonstrate the application of the simplified criteria that I presented in the previous session titled VQ, Simplified Criteria for the On-Call Radiologist. Again, if you haven't had a chance to view that presentation, I recommend it before tackling the cases presented in this session. I will present a few bread and butter cases with some demonstrating common artifacts before progressing on to a few more challenging and interesting cases. I will show the relevant images for each case and pause a few seconds to allow you all to formulate your own impression prior to providing a summary of the findings and my interpretation. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time to view the images. With that said, let's get started with the first case. Here we have DTPA ventilation images marked with a V and perfusion images marked with a P in multiple projections side by side. There is no comparison chest radiograph. Take some time to review the images. There is homogeneous distribution of radiotracer in both the ventilation and perfusion images. There are no mismatched perfusion defects suspicious for pulmonary embolism. Notice a small amount of residual DTPA in the trachea and swallow DTPA in the stomach. Both are frequently seen artifacts. In summation, this is a normal exam. I thought it would be good to start with this exam because we see so many abnormal VQ exams due to both embolic and non-embolic causes that it can be easy to forget what a completely normal exam looks like. In this next case, xenon ventilation images are shown on the top with perfusion images below. There is no comparison chest radiograph. Take some time to formulate an opinion. The ventilation images demonstrate a slightly heterogeneous pattern with air trapping in the lower lobes likely related to underlying COPD. The perfusion images demonstrate a slightly heterogeneous pattern with several small peripheral defects. These defects aren't clearly matched. The constellation of findings are neither characteristic of PE present or PE absent, classifying this study as indeterminate. For those interested, these findings can also classify as low probability. In cases like this, where the findings are likely due to underlying COPD, I typically add a comment to my impression stating that I think the findings are more characteristic of non-thromboembolic causes. In this case, DTPA ventilation images in multiple projections are displayed on the top with corresponding perfusion images below. A comparison chest radiograph is available on the next slide. Take some time to review the images. There are no significant ventilation defects. There are numerous moderate to large mismatched perfusion defects involving both lungs, with the largest defect involving the left upper lobe. The chest radiograph is normal. The constellation of findings classify this study as PE present. In this case, xenon ventilation images are displayed at the top with perfusion images below. There is no comparison chest radiograph. Take some time to formulate an opinion. There are no significant ventilation defects on this somewhat limited ventilation exam. There are multiple foci of abnormal increased uptake scattered throughout the lungs on the perfusion exam. These are consistent with artifacts secondary to MAA clumping. No significant mismatch perfusion defects are identified. Despite the presence of clumping artifact, 
The constellation of imaging findings classify this exam as no PE. This case will be presented on three slides. The first two demonstrate DTPA ventilation and perfusion images in multiple projections side by side. The third is the comparison chest radiograph. Take some time to review the images. The most significant finding in this exam is a single matched ventilation and perfusion defect in the right middle lobe. The comparison chest radiograph is normal. The constellation of findings in this case are neither characteristic of PE present or PE absent, classifying this study as indeterminate. Again, for those interested, these findings can also classify as low probability. There are two image slides associated with this case, and both display DTPA ventilation and perfusion images in multiple projections side by side. There is no comparison chest radiograph. Take a moment to review the images. The images demonstrate a somewhat difficult to see single large mismatched perfusion defect involving the left upper loop that is best seen on the LPO projection. The constellation of findings in this case are again neither characteristic of PE present or PE absent, classifying this study as indeterminate. In this case, xenon ventilation images are displayed on the top with perfusion images below. No comparison chest radiograph is available. Take a moment to formulate an opinion. We see multiple large mismatched perfusion defects predominantly involving the right lung. There is also matched diffuse decreased ventilation perfusion of the mid and lower left lung. Constellation of findings classify this study as PE present. Of note, the relatively matched diffuse decreased ventilation perfusion of the mid and lower left lung could be due to a large pleural effusion. It is likely not embolic in etiology given its non-segmental appearance. In this next case, we have DTPA ventilation and perfusion images displayed in multiple projections side by side. There is a comparison chest radiograph on the next slide. Take a moment to review the images. The most important findings include a single matched ventilation and perfusion defect involving the posterior inferior right lower lobe that demonstrates a stripe sign. There is also a matching subtle opacity in the posterior lung on the lateral chest radiograph. The presence of the stripe sign classifies the study as no PE. One could argue that the constellation of findings constitute a triple match in the lower lung zone. And as such, a classification of indeterminate by the modified PIAPE criteria would be warranted. However, while it is technically true that there is a triple match in the lower lung zone on this study, the presence of the stripe sign supersedes this. In this case, xenon ventilation images are displayed on the top with perfusion images below. There is a comparison chest radiograph available on the following slide. Please take a moment and review the images. There is mild heterogeneous decreased ventilation of the bilateral lung apices. There are also multiple large mismatched perfusion defects primarily involving the upper lobes with small mismatched perfusion defects elsewhere within the lungs. The chest radiograph demonstrates marked fibrotic changes within the upper lobes bilaterally. Of note, 
The radio traces are seen along the left lateral margin of the ventilation images is consistent with external radio tracer within the tubing supplying the mask used to administer the xenon gas. The multiple large mismatched perfusion defects in the upper lobes classify this study as PE present. However, during the critical finding call, it was relayed that there was low clinical suspicion of PE in this case. The low clinical suspicion raises the likelihood that the perfusion abnormalities are related to non-embolic causes i.e. the lung fibrosis. Despite this, a CTA of the chest is warranted, if possible, to confirm the abscess of PE in this patient. This interesting case will be displayed on three slides. The first shows anterior and posterior xenon ventilation images, the second, perfusion images, and the third, the comparison chest radiograph. Take some time now to review the images. No significant ventilation defects are present. Note the non-segmental defect on the anterior image created by the enlarged left pulmonary artery. There is diffusely heterogeneous perfusion to both lungs without significant mismatched perfusion defect. The chest radiograph demonstrates an enlarged heart with pulmonary enlargement, particularly on the left. The constellation of findings classify as no PE. For those interested, these findings can also classify as low probability. The pulmonary artery enlargement on the chest radiograph suggests underlying pulmonary hypertension. And the diffusely heterogeneous perfusion pattern, while nonspecific, could be secondary to chronic pulmonary embolism. An additional interesting finding on this exam is the abnormal renal uptake on the perfusion images, suggestive of a right to left shunt. This was confirmed with additional imaging of the head, which demonstrates deposition of MAA in the brain. In this next case, xenon ventilation images are displayed at the top with perfusion images below. There are two comparison chest radiographs available on the next slide that were completed approximately four years apart. Take a moment to review the images. Ventilation images reveal marked decreased ventilation of the left lung with some residual ventilation of the left upper lobe. No significant ventilation defects are seen on the right. Perfusion images demonstrate a diffusely heterogeneous perfusion pattern with marked decreased perfusion to the left lower lobe, similar to the ventilation images. There is a single large perfusion defect involving the posterior lateral margin of the left upper lobe best seen on the LAO projection. The most recent chest radiograph on the left demonstrates a mass-like soft tissue density in the left perihilar region that is not seen on the prior exam from 2005. There is also increased retrocardiac density likely related to obstructive atelectasis or pneumonia. The constellation of findings are neither characteristic of PE present or PE absent, classifying this study as indeterminate. The marked decreased ventilation perfusion of the left lower lobe is likely related to post-obstructive atelectasis or pneumonia, while the large defect in the left upper lobe may represent PE or additional post-obstructive atelectasis or pneumonia. In this last case, xenon ventilation images are displayed at the top with perfusion images below. A comparison chest radiograph is displayed on the next slide. Take a moment to formulate an impression. Ventilation images demonstrate a large defect involving the lateral mid-right lung. 
Perfusion images demonstrate a similar large matching defect in the same location. The chest radiograph shows a matching large consolidative opacity in the right upper lobe, likely representing pneumonia. The constellation of findings constitute a triple match in the upper or mid lung zone and classify the study as no PE. Here are a few of the references utilized in the creation of this presentation. This concludes today's presentation. I hope you found it informative and useful.